fellow artists, my name is Lauren. I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios. In this video, I'll be explaining a couple quick tips of how to use a kneaded eraser. So if you're interested in hearing how I use the kneaded eraser in my own work, keep on watching. All right, so if you're not familiar with kneaded erasers, they look like this. They're a pretty tacky type of rubber. I think they mostly come in gray and they're very soft and pliable and so what you do is that when you're when you want to erase something you, you basically just press the kneaded eraser onto your piece of paper and this tacky surface will pick up the pencil or colored pencil or whatever on your paper and embed it into the surface of the eraser and that's how it erases. So with a normal eraser, you're probably all familiar with, um, a normal eraser actually generates shavings. Is as you're applying friction with the eraser on your surface of the paper, part of the eraser comes off with the pigment. And so it's a, it's a different type of erasing. With a regular plastic, hard plastic eraser, you can erase very clean lines. Um, with the kneaded eraser, it's more for lightening areas rather than erasing areas completely. So I think it's good to have both in your arsenal, but they're used, or I use them for different two different things. Um, one question you might have is, how do you know when your eraser is used up? Because the normal eraser, it basically gets smaller over time as you use it. The kneaded eraser, how do you know when you need a new one? Um, and so I'll ha I have a new eraser. This one I just opened up a couple days ago, so it's very soft and pliable. And this is a used eraser, so this eraser is really firm and it's less, a lot less elastic than the new eraser. So that's because it, it basically has a lot of gunk in it. It has a lot of pencil, a lot of color pencil in it. So the properties of the eraser slowly change over time as you use it. So comparing the two, you can see the one on the left, the new one is a little bit lighter gray, and the one on the right is definitely a little bit darker gray. Um, but you can kind of judge for yourself when you feel the texture of your eraser, if it's not feeling as tacky anymore, that might be a good sign that you probably need to change it out and get a new one. So when you purchase your eraser, it, they basically all come in either square or rectangular kind of eraser bricks, kind of like this one. So this one I bought from Blick and it's, uh, I think it was only a dollar or two. And so I only pulled this piece off of this new brick. So this one will actually last me probably another, you can make another probably six quarter sized eraser balls from this one. And I recommend you not unwrapping the whole thing and using the whole thing as one giant ball, mainly because in case it rolls off the table, picks up a lot of dirt and dust, it's, it's a pain to get that kind of debris out of your eraser. So if that happened to the small little guy, it's not that big of a deal. You can just, you know, try and rip off the part that's really dirty and you can still use it. But it's much harder if you have the, the whole thing just covered in dust and, and junk. <laughs> so only pull off what you need and then keep the rest. Uh, I keep it in the same packaging and just put it someplace where, you know, it won't get too dirty. So going back to the eraser, I have this little test sheet I prepared. This just has pencil on it and this is color pencil. So comparing the two different erasers, you can see with a regular white plastic eraser, you can put a lot of pressure on it and you know, you get a little eraser shaving and the surface is pretty clean. I would say you erased 99% of the pencil. 
with a kneaded eraser because the surface of the kneaded eraser is so soft the eraser actually kind of gives more but you can still erase it it just it's just a little different and so you can see on the surface of the kneaded eraser it picked up the graphite and actually turned that surface pretty dark so after a certain point, you'll find that the surface of the kneaded eraser is not as sticky. And so to clean your kneaded eraser, all you need to do is just kind of knead it like taffy. A couple times, roll it back into a ball. And that graphite that I just erased is now incorporated into the entire eraser. So the surface is now back to its original level of tackiness and you can continue erasing. So in colored pencil applications, um, you can see how well the regular white plastic eraser does at erasing. It, color pencil is a little bit different medium, but you can get maybe 70-80% of it off and you can See, you get a little green eraser shaving from it. Um, but if I go in with a kneaded eraser, uh, it's a lot different. You can see that my kneaded eraser is actually bending and folding over itself um, because it's so soft. But it is picking up some color over here, as you can tell. But it doesn't erase nearly as cleanly as um, your regular plastic eraser. So what I like to use a kneaded eraser for is basically just lightening areas. So if I need to, you know, clean her off an entire area, I'll go in with my regular white eraser. But if I, I colored, say something uh, orange, but I realized, oh, that orange is way too bright, I need to tone it down a bit, I can actually go over and just press my eraser onto that area and just lightly use the surface of the the tacky surface of the eraser to pick up the pigment and it does a decent job of it and again to clean it you just fold it on itself pull it like taffy a couple times and you can't even see the green anymore it's like magic but there is a lifespan to an eraser so I've tried a couple different brands. I'll leave the brands up on the screen along with their prices for you so you can see their retail prices. And most kneaded erasers are only going to run you $1 to $3. They're not too expensive. So I recommend just getting the cheaper, cheapest one if you have the option of doing so. Any major pencil brand will also have a kneaded eraser brand most likely that you can use. And that's it for my video. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up so other people can view it as well. I'll try and make this into kind of a mini series of quick tips with different art medias that I use. If you'd like to see me do a topic on another art medium, uh, leave a comment down below and I will try my best to do one if you are interested in seeing a specific topic. And thank you very much for watching.